one football app sponsored transfer news roundup for you today where we're basically going to go and have a look at all the West Ham stories from across the newspapers and the internet. Now we've got a little bit of Luis Felipe, we've got some Divock Origi, some Gianluca Scamacca news, there's also a little Harvey Barnes update, a few other bits and pieces as well which we'll try and shoehorn into the next 10 or so minutes. Let's go with the Harvey Barnes thing uh, right now though. It might have moved slightly from yesterday when it looked like Newcastle had stolen a march on West Ham. It seems that no bid has been made and Newcastle are trying to get the player for £25 million. This is from at least two news sources. Matt Law is reporting this and also the Daily Mail are reporting this as well. Now, why would Newcastle be trying to undercut the deal? As far as we know... Leicester City want a similar amount of money that they wanted for James Madison. They got £40 million from Tottenham for James Madison. I think the general consensus is that Barnes had probably, you could probably haggle them down at £30, £35 million. However, Newcastle are trying to push it through for £25 million. Why? Well, believe it or not, it's as far as the article suggests, it's financial fair play. Now, I don't know whether that means because they're in Europe this season, they're going to have to adhere to that. I thought that would get assessed a little while after they got into Europe, but they're watching it anyway. And as the eagle-eyed amongst you have pointed out, it's not just Joe Linton and then Sir Maximum, who can be deployed uh, on the left uh, for Newcastle. They've also got uh, Isak, who played a number of times there last season. So there's no certainty whatsoever. Not only that Harvey Barnes would go in and start for Newcastle, he possibly wouldn't, but also Newcastle aren't desperate for that player in that area of the pitch. So they don't need to go out and bid £50 million for the player. If this goes through, it won't be a £50 million transfer. It's understood that the player's quite keen to go to Newcastle, but until somebody makes a bid, and we ain't made a bid, and neither of Newcastle, then I guess we're still in with a shout of it. I did want to have a quick chat about uh, Eunice Musa before I get on to this Luis Felipe stuff. Now, the latest story is that Eunice Musa. I'm not sure whether or not we were ever really in for him, but I, I liked it. I liked the link. And when I had a look at the player, a closer look at the player, I thought, yeah, this guy would be ideal for West Ham. As you know, I just think we're, we're lacking pace uh, throughout the team, really. We've got some smatterings of it occasionally, but more or less, we're quite a slow team. And I thought he ticks a lot of the boxes. I think we perhaps lack a little bit of driving force midfield, certainly with Declan leaving. So this this guy made sense. If you don't know who he is, I've, I've done videos on him in the past. He's a he's a young player. He's playing over in Spain at the moment. He's a USA international, but he came through the ranks at Arsenal. So he's classed as homegrown, full of energy, uh, looks to be a real box-to-box -box player. And he's young, 19, 20, something like that. Really, really young. But it looks like Fulham are going to get him, and the reason they're going to do that is to facilitate us getting Jao Polinia. So they sort of get the 19, 20-year-old, and we get the 28-year-old for an overinflated fee. I, I'm not saying Polinia's a bad player. He's, he's really not, but I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't like that. Look, what do I think of the story? Do I, do I think it's a true story or not? It's sort of believable. Do I believe we're getting Polinia? I'm not so sure. On the poppycockometer, do I believe that Fulham could pip us... Um, you know, to a to a young talented player, yeah, I, I think there might be some truth in it. Certainly, uh, there's there's another there's another rumor doing the rounds here, and that is, it's it's Real Betis player uh, Luis Felipe. Now, it's rumored that we're quite close to being to tying up a 17 million pound deal for this player. Now, I don't know. I'll let you decide whether you think we need another centre-back or not. I'm not saying we don't need another one, but Ogbon has signed up for another year. Just surely there are more important places for us to strengthen in the squad, like like central midfield. As I understand it, we're playing, we play Boreham Wood tonight. Antonio is not going to feature in, in a bit of the pre-season, possibly tonight. I guess we'll know. We'll find out the truth later on, won't we? Is Skamaka back? I don't know. Is he available? I, I, I believe he's not. We know Danny Ings is back. But we also probably know Danny Ings isn't the best option for West Ham, particularly if David Moyes is going to be managing the team. So it looks like Mubama's going to be starting up front. I've got no problem with that. Good. Good for Mubama. I would like this to be his breakthrough season. However, I still think that striker is, is one of the priority positions. I'd certainly put, I'd put midfielder first, and I'd probably put striker second. I'd certainly... Then I'd probably put... There's, there's a number of positions, I think my point is, that I would put before centre-back. Are we interested in this player? Normally, 
I'll be saying, uh, you know what, I'm on the fence with this one, with the Luis Felipe. However, we do know that David Moyes does love a centre-back. And also we lost Dawson. So I don't know. This, this, this is going to be really interesting. I think, um, I think uh, Luis Felipe is 26 years of age. So I guess the age range isn't mad. We know there's no point in wishing for a younger centre-back from David Moyes. It just ain't going to happen because David Moyes doesn't... Um, we, we know what he thinks. He likes his centre-backs to have you know, two, three hundred games experience under their belt. So I just think, mm, possibly believable. I'm on the fence with this one. Uh, before I go any further, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, which you can download by clicking the link below. Why would you download the One Football app? Well, it's the best app in the business, quite frankly, because you can tailor it to your own specifications. It's a customizable app. So it's a generic football app, but what you'll do is it'll only deliver the news to you that you want. So when you sign up and when you log in, it'll ask you which football teams you support. You put in West Ham and what it will do is it will go searching all around the internet, all around the newspapers, and it will cherry pick all of those West Ham stories, put them all into one bundle and deliver it straight to your phone so you don't have to go sifting through all this stuff and searching for it. The link is in the description below. If you please use that link, if you've not used it before, um, we get a pat on the head because, uh, well, because they know you've come from Hammers Chat, so we've done our job, but... If you don't like it, you can just uninstall it. I'll tell you now, though, it is a very, very good app just for keeping up to date with all the latest West Ham stories. If, you've only, if you're on the go and you've only got five minutes without scrolling through absolutely everything. Uh, oh, actually, before I go any further, by the way, I've got a parcel. I've got a parcel from Geo. There you go. Um, it's... Uh, I'm going to open it now. It's a bit of an unboxing video, this. Geo said to me, open this on a video. I think I know what they are. But I don't know what, he's a bit, he can be a bit sneaky, Geo, to be perfectly honest with you. Oh, it's like past the parcel, this is. He's packaged it well. What have we got here? What have we got? Okay, okay, it is. Right, there's, there's a note in there which I'm going to read out. This is West Ham's new, West Ham's, this is Hammers Chat's new player ratings book. There it is. Oh, bloody hell, hold on. It's slippery. Uh, this is one of our features that we do throughout the season. Started it last season. It's our player ratings. Basically, over on Patreon, uh, after every single West Ham match, we, we give each player a ratings. And we basically, hopefully at the end of the year, we find out who our hammer of the year is. The Hammers Chat Hammer of the Year. But we do a little video series after each and every game where myself and Gio go through and, and rank and rates every player. Uh, a lot of you join in. Um, now, if you want to grab yourself one of these, even if you're not a patron, you can still go and grab yourself one of these at Hammers Chat Store. Dot com. In fact, if you are an addict, a patron addict, you get one of these um, for free, but you'd know that anyway, because we've already told you. What's Geo? What's Geo written? He says, one for you, and make sure um, you promote these. They're four quid via our online store. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The link's in the description, which it absolutely is. A few to give away as well. Um, well, uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, basically, Geo's saying since I'm into some giveaways, then I can give some away. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give one of these away today to one of you, which I'll send. Um, oh, what can you do? I'll tell you what, just best comment of the day. Best comment of the day, all right, gets one of these. And I'll tell you what, I'll give another one away tomorrow. Can't say fairer than that. If any of the rest of you want any, then go and check them out over Hammers Chat Score. Dot com. Thank you very much, Geo. Now, uh, let's get on to another story. Right, Divock Origi. Um, here's, here's the situation. There's a lot of clubs in Italy who want Gianluca Scamacca. So as I understand it, Roma, AC Milan and Juventus have all shown an interest in Gianluca Scamacca, but they can't afford him. Well, I say they can't afford him. That's not strictly true. I think they just... I mean, they're just playing a little bit of hardball or something. Now, AC Milan are a funny one because all of these clubs have offered to take Skamaka on loan. We're not interested in that. Why would we be? We're trying to sort our financial fair play situation out, which we know is not particularly good at the moment. However, AC Milan have signed Tonyali to Newcastle for somewhere between 60 and 70 million, depending on which newspaper you read. They've got money now. That I believe it, at the point of recording this video, they've only spent 16 million euros of that on Ruben Loftus-Cheek, funny enough. So they've got money sat there. There's no reason for AC Milan to just do 
like a derisory loan bid if they really want Gianluca Scamacca, right? This, despite the fact that he didn't really work out at West Ham last season, Scamacca's highly thought of in Italy. I think Zlatan Ibrahimovic has just retired. I think he retired. I might have that wrong, but I think that's the case. And I know they were after a striker because they wanted Marcus Churam, but he went and joined uh, their city rivals into Milan. So what they've done, the moment we turned down a loan bid for Scamacca and said we're not interested, they have since come back and tried to offer Divock Origi as a swap. West Ham said, West Ham said no. This was seemed to be common knowledge uh, last season. There's some things that the club are happy to leak and there's some things that they want to keep quiet. The club were quite happy to say they've no interest in Divock Origi. That's what was being said last week. Uh, so we're now getting this story that Divock Origi has turned down West Ham. I, I'm pretty damn sure that is not the truth. And in fact, on the poppycockometer, that is definitely going into the horseshit section, quite frankly, because there's just no way that West Ham wants to do this swap deal. So if you're hearing a swap deal uh, for that, absolutely forget it, dismiss it. It just ain't true at all. Uh, we've got a couple of other little bits and pieces here. If we're just going through uh, the One Football app at the moment, there. There's a, the Ben Johnson link, that sort of won't go away. Are we going to keep Ben Johnson for next season? It it appears that we won't. But the one thing I would say is we, we've got to be careful with our, with our English player quota here. So if what we're going to do is, if we were going to let Ben Johnson go, and obviously Declan Rice has gone, but we were going to bring in, let's say, Harvey Barnes and James Ward-Prowse, and it's not really a problem, is it? If we're not going to get Harvey Barnes and we're going to go and sign uh, the, the Brazilian winger instead, um, when, you know, we're not going to get James Ward-Prowse, but we're going to go and get uh, Polinia instead, then we have a little problem on our hands. We better start buying some English players. Um, I, I think this is probably really, really important. Um, the other story, again, I'm not... I'm not overly fussed on this story, to be honest with you, because it just seems like it's run for a little bit too long now. And that's Dennis Sicaria apparently meeting West Ham and Juventus are meeting today. The one thing I would say on all this transfer stuff and all this, all this transfer speculation is last season, the Scamacca transfer sort of came out of nowhere. He wasn't really on the radar. Um, I, I think he was signed, signed, sealed, delivered, as Stevie Wonder would say within a week of his name being mentioned and suggested. And I think Paqueta was even less. Now, I'm not saying that's the same with everybody. We were linked with Ariola for a long time. However, he had been on loan. And then we, we made that sign him. What I would say is, and we also were linked with Maxwell Cornet for a little while before we signed him. We saw those, those ones coming, possibly Emerson as well. However, I'll give you four which is a Gerd, Flynn Downs, Skamaka and Paqueta, there was no build-up. So I wouldn't read into the fact that there's been a massive build-up for Sakaria. I don't think it necessarily means we are going to sign him or we're not going to sign him. But I think what it does suggest is, based on last season, there probably are going to be a couple of signings that we aren't expected that just hit us and they get done pretty quickly. Well, fingers crossed, at least I hope so.